प्लीज लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब फॉर मोर वीडियोस थैंक यू So we're looking at checkmate pattern number 12 and this one you may have heard of as Bowden's mate. I also call it the crisscross, the criss crisscross mate. Um, it's named after the player Samuel Bowden who played a famous example and we're going to start with that example here and the first I would say you know time this was made famous was in this game and it was in London in 1853. His opponent with the white pieces was Skulder. Uh, but in actual fact, there was an earlier uh, case of this Bolden mate, and it was previously seen in the game between Holwich and Poppert in Hamburg, 1844. So I always find it strange when something is given a name, but it was played earlier. I find it a bit unfair on the person who first played it. But this is a very nice example to get us kicked off. So in this position, quite a dynamic position, White played Queen to F3, and we're just going to see the build up here. Black now moved his bishop to an active square, bishop to f5, where it kind of cuts across the board there. And white has a difficult decision to make. If he castles kingside, he's going to be open on the g file. So he decides to castle queenside, but this has some major problems as well. And black came up with an absolutely fantastic move now. Maybe you can also be a Bowden here, or a crisscrosser and spot what black played in this position. And it's really to do this mate with the two bishops, as we're gonna see. And again, to get a real expert in these mating techniques, you've gotta really notice your good pieces and relate them to the checkmates you're trying to arrange. So what is the move here? Pause if you need a bit of time. D5, a brilliant pawn sacrifice. And the point of this move is to open up the bishop on F8. And this crisscross checkmate is to do with the two bishops. So white decided now to take the pawn on d5, and it doesn't matter what he takes this pawn with, and the point of this is now black can force checkmate. Can you see how now? Queen takes c3, a brilliant queen sacrifice. Has to be accepted, pawn takes c3, and now the bishop on f8 flies into glory, bishop to a3, checkmate. And you can see here the pattern of the two bishops, hence why I call it the criss cross checkmate. The bishops are crossing and crissing, whatever crissing means, not sure, made it up, who knows, and give checkmate in this very nice way. So this is something that occurs occasionally, this checkmate, it can occur in, in different sort of positions, but most often when one player has castle queenside and you have a very strong bishop, like here, the bishop on f5, cutting across that king. So watch out for it in those cases, but we'll have a look at another example now from a real game. We now have a, an example of this from a very a very modern example, should I say, just to prove that all these puzzles don't just occur in the 1800s or the 1700s. They, they are actually very relevant to today. And this is taken from the chess.com chess challenge played um, when I filmed this video very recently in 2017, August. And we have MVL, Maxime vachier lagrave playing with the black pieces against Geoffrey Jean. And here it's black to play. And this was only a one minute game. It was a bullet game, so even more impressive. But here it's black to play and force checkmate. And hopefully you can now see the pattern. Even if you haven't seen it before, can you notice this pattern? Black to play and force checkmate. So what should you be seeing when you're looking for these things? Well, first of all, we have this bishop here, like before, but on the other side of the board, cutting across the king. So if there's some way we can get the other bishop to crisscross its way in, it will deliver checkmate. And you should be able to see it's the same kind of technique here. Queen takes f3 check. That has to be accepted. And now, because the g-pawn has been removed, we can crisscross with bishop h3 checkmate. So a very, very nice and I expect very satisfying checkmate that MVL was able to do on his opponent there. And we've got one more example of the crisscross coming up. And it's a little bit more complicated. So let's move over there now. This last example, we're going back in the past again, sorry about that, but we're looking at two great players, two heroes of the game. Nimzovic with the white pieces against uh, Alexander Alekhine with black. And this just demonstrates again how in seemingly positions where these things could never occur, there's always underlying tactics. Now, Nimzovic here castled queenside. And at first glance, this may seem like a, a dubious idea because surely the pawn on d4 can now be taken because black has one, two, 
free pieces attacking this pawn. But you can't take this pawn. In the game, um, Alexander played bishop to d6, a good move. But let's see what happens if he'd have tried taking the pawn. So let's see. Okay, he takes on d4, and now Nimzovich was planning to recapture, and now knight takes d4. And there was an extremely brilliant and clever idea that Nimzovich had up his sleeve here. Can you be a Nimzovich just for one day? Can you see what White had planned here? And remember this pattern of the crisscross. The bishop here, this is what your brain should really be noticing. It's crossing the path of the king. So the alarm bell should be ringing. But how on earth here can you possibly get a bishop to a6? It seems like that is just not going to happen, but it can. Pause now if you need to. Well, what we can play here, we can first sacrifice the exchange. Rook takes d4 when black really has to take that. And now we are able to bring our queen into e6. Queen takes e6 check. And the most natural move here is knight to d7. And maybe black thinks he's just about holding on. But here we have the very strong bishop on f4. And we can force checkmate. Can you see it? Queen to c6 check. Beautiful example. The queen has to be taken. And again, we've opened up the other diagonal towards the king. Bishop to a6. And again, we have the crisscross Bowden's checkmate, even though I think Bowden was a little bit greedy taking his checkmate for himself. So um, a very nice checkmate. And I think if you ever get that in a game, you can be very proud. But as we can see, as we have seen, it does occur. And it's something that I think we, we need to be aware of.